All right. Well, we're continuing our way through the uh, our, this podcast, which we're calling uh, the Mission of God for the Family. We've talked about the three the the three spheres of Eden, uh, the the Garden, the Land of Eden, and the Wilderness, the Wilds, um, and we have begun talking about the way um, the Garden or the the what we're using metaphorically as the home sphere um, is uh, a transformative place, but it also transforms the people in it, right? It forms and transforms people. Um, it, that's where people are made and where they are raised and in order to go out and begin working the land. Um, and then the, the resources of the land are brought back to the garden and then used to build up and build out the garden. Um, and eventually we'll talk about how those people that are then made there and then trained in the land will go out into the wilds. The children um, go out and they further in the garden, they, they take a piece of the wild and they turn it into a new garden and a new land. And then they work the, the wilds into a land and then make children in order to go out and, and conquer more wilds. But I want to talk specifically about um, the home and because we've, we've talked about the, how homemaking um, and domesticity, uh, the the uh, the love of a domicile, which is what domesticity is, the caring for, the building up, the love of a do, of a of a domicile, uh, a, and if you think about the word domicile, it's the place where you have dominion, right? So it's the the jurisdiction um, that a, a family has. That their home is is their domicile and domesticity is the love uh, the building up of the caring for the love of a domicile well and that domesticity is what makes uh, a what, what makes men take their strength and use it uh, in a fierce and uh, sort of way right it turns them into uh, fierce people fierce uh, husbands because they have something to protect, right? So they're going to go out into the world and use that fierceness. Uh, now, we will talk eventually about how one of the things that goes wrong is when that fierceness is turned inward rather than outward, right? The, the, uh, it should be a loving, caring, uh, inward-focused uh, husband, um, father, who's, who uses all of that strength in a, a protective, loving, caring way, gentle way, a kind way in, but outward, it's he's going to be somebody that works really hard out in the land that's not easily uh, discouraged because he knows that he's got something to work for. Well, one of the things that that uh, causes that is when he's the the domicile is a uh, is a well functioning place, right? When the domicile is is working well. Um, and a big part of that has to do with understanding the uh, what it is, what a house actually is. Um, we, If you asked a question like, well, what's better, a sledgehammer or jumper cables? The question, of course, would be, well, what what's the thing that you're trying to do, right? Uh, it depends on the, the situation as to whether a uh, sledgehammer or jumper cables is going to be the right thing for that moment. Um, well, so you don't know what to do in the home. You don't know what tools to use unless you know what it is. And uh, so what I want to talk about is how a homemaker is an image of God uh, question or an image of God calling. Um, in John 14, 2, Jesus says, in my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Right? Jesus says, "I'm going up to my father's house." Right. So his father has a house. His father uh, has made a home, and that he is going to take uh, on the role of preparing a place in the home. Right? So Jesus is a homemaker. Right. So uh, in our world in our day and age um, homemaker is looked at as an insult right when when somebody says oh what you know what's what's your wife do and i answer homemaker um sometimes people uh, uh go oh really you know that's all oh um did she not ever want to do anything else or oh man you guys are so lucky that you're able 
to do that. You know, you must make a lot of money, which is not the case at all. What it is, is it's something that we know is valuable um, and that we know that God has given her uh, the skills and the uh, ability to do. Uh, Titus 2.5, it says, it's talking about older women. Older women teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, right? Home homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed, right? Now notice the motivation, right? The motivation is that the word of God is, uh, becomes uh, uh, convincing in that uh, the, a situation, right? That, that women have an apologetic uh, ability um when the when the older women are teaching the younger women to, to do these things to be sober love their husbands love their children be keepers at home discreet chaste right when they're learning those things the that it's an apologetic that they are building at home right that homemaking is an apologetic enterprise uh it is a defense of the word of god because uh, but and so notice that he what he doesn't say he doesn't come and say here's what people are allowed to do and not allowed to do. Here's what women are allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do. Right? What he does is he says when when you have young women uh doing these things, old older women having done these things, younger women doing these things, that the beauty of that situation is going to elevate and make the word of God obviously convincing. Right? People are not going to be able to speak against it. Uh, there's I I'd like to uh you know, uh, Francis Schaeffer is one of my favorite uh, apolo apologists, theologians, writers, cultural commentators, you know, all of the different things. He's a, he's a very, he was very influential on me. Um, but one of the things that we have to remember, you know, with places like Labrie, if you haven't read uh, Edith Schaeffer's book on Labrie, uh, she tells the story from her perspective on uh, Francis Schaeffer going out and establishing an, a, uh, an evangelistic house up in the uh, uh up in the uh, alps um and he is an credit in fact my uncle came to the lord through his ministry there in the alps my uncle was uh you know he was out hitchhiking across europe a burnt out hippie and and um he heard there was a free place to stay uh and he he goes up there and he comes to comes to the lord comes home a completely changed person uh, and and Francis Schaefer had an incredible ministry. Well, uh, it's important to remember, though, that all of Francis Schaefer's theology and apologetics smelled like Edith's cinnamon rolls. Right? Edith had built a home that people loved to be in. Edith had, uh, you know, e Edith, she could uh, answer apologetic questions and she could uh, explain the gospel. She's an incredible writer. She's got a great book on homemaking called um, The Hidden Art. Uh, it's just a wonderful book, well worth the read. But what happens is when uh, a woman has built a home that her children want to be in, that her, that the neighbors want to be in, when she's built a home, that it actually is an apologetic um, because it is a picture of what you're being invited into with the gospel because you're being invited into God's house, right? In my father's house are many mansions. Uh, I go to prepare a place for you. So when you're building a house, you're, you are putting on display what it is that Jesus is doing. Uh, the, so it should, we should never start with the question, what is and what is not allowed? Because that's not where Paul starts, right? We start with the question of how do we uh, how do we make beautiful the gospel, right? And one of the things that makes beautiful the gospel is homemaking, right? Is uh, is a, a a space that is built for the fellowship of the family. And you know Chesterton, he's got a a, a famous saying about not destroying a fence that if you don't know what it's there for. Right, because you don't know what it's keeping in or keeping out. Um, if you just come across a fence and you say, "Well, I don't, I don't see what this fence is for right at the moment," we should tear it down. Well, that's what actually happened with homemaking. Um, with the in our society, it, it has been devalued, um, and it hasn't been good. You, I mean, you see the fruit. Uh, 
I think it's easy to look and blame uh, all of the the public schools and and blame the leftists and blame, but I think um, what happened is a generation even before all of that came about, home was uh, gutted of its of of its uh, people forming significance in our imagination, right? So, and we destroyed a fence that we didn't know what it was there for. We, uh, you, uh, Karl Marx comes along and he asks the question, "What's more valuable, a?" prostitute or a housewife and he says well a prostitute brings in more money and that sounds like a joke but he actually means she's a part of the economy and the uh, and uh dom uh, a dom the the dom the domicile is not now he wanted uh, um projects basically he wanted the the projects um in philadelphia were built uh as a, basically a communist experiment can we just get everybody give them their own give everybody uh us the same um the exact same apartment everywhere uh and we'll be able to produce like a factory we can produce children like for factories um but that's a uh that it because that's a view of people of what they're for is different than what god says they're for right we're forming people who are going to be worshipers for eternity uh and um the the main place that that happens is in the home right the, in the home so uh we need to learn to honor homemaking as the same sort of way that paul does that says it is a way of putting on display the good news of the the uh the hospitality of God that is a big part of the gospel. So uh, instead of starting with what is and what is not allowed, we have to start with what is this, this good thing that God is calling us to? Because first Timothy five fourteen, 14, um, he, uh, Paul also says, uh, I will therefore, I will therefore, right. I, I want that y younger women to marry, bear children, guide the house, um, the the word um is the the greek word is uh, oikodespot um uh, something like that oiko oikodespot uh, it, uh which is the means the the house ruler right the one that that uh runs the house right the homemaker um the one that makes the home give uh, and he says give no occasion to the adversary adversary to speak reproachfully right it's the same argument that when when they see the um the glorious house that that uh, a woman has built uh, built in the name of the lord they are not going to be able to argue against that right they're not going to be able to say well no they're they're not going to be able to to uh to to just shove that away um, because the beauty is uh, of a well functioning home puts on display the good news in a in a way that can't be argued against. Um, so the call to being a homemaker is a call to being like Christ, to to be a world builder. Um, Jesus is the creator of the world, you know, Colossians 1, 15 through 20, uh, the beginning of, of John 1. Um, the, the call is to build a world and build a home, which Hebrews three talks about Jesus as the architect uh, of the of the home. Um, you build a house, build a home, right? So uh, the call to being a homemaker is the call to be like Jesus, who is a world builder, because the world uh, is a home, and the home is a world. In the when the Bible talks about it, right? When my, when Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. Um, he receives from God a tabernacle, um, and he receives it as a vision first, and then he gets specific directions on how to build it. Um, and the book of Hebrews tells us that he's receiving a home, right? He, he's receiving a home to build, uh, and God's glory cloud you know, it rests on the mountain. And then uh, Moses spends six days up there uh, basically writing down the architectural directions on how to build a home for god and his people to meet in um and uh the the it's not it's it 
makes sense that it would take six days to, to set up the heavenly vision of the tabernacle um, because the it is a world that he's building, right? The world was built in six days. Moses receives the heavenly vision of the tabernacle over the course of six days. And then you see that the tabernacle is, uh, it's a home, right? It's called a home um, in 2 Samuel 7. Uh, David is told that he's not going to be one that builds a home for the Lord, He's uh, that his son is going to be, right? It's called a home, but in God's economy, a home is a world, right? Is a, a world in and of itself. And the tabernacle as God's home, um, it has all of the pieces of the heavens and the earth, the way God originally built it, right? You've got the the three layers of earth, heaven, and the heaven of heavens. You've got the court, uh, the courtyard, the holy place and the holy of holies. Uh, you creation has the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky, and it has the seven wandering stars uh, in the sky. And the tabernacle has the seven, uh, the seven lighted lampstand uh, giving light to the holy place. Right. So it has a, a lampstand with seven uh, places to hold lamps. And the lamps, if you think about it, it would be like uh, a, a like the, the lamp you rub to get a genie right? You would have seven of those sitting up there. And those are uh, direct, co directly correlated to the seven lights in the heavens. So uh, the home, the, the tabernacle is a home, but it's also a world. Uh, and Moses was a home builder, but he was also a world builder. Uh, and so, uh, but our culture, our generation, it's gone out of its way to mock and denigrate uh, the the calling of homemaker, um, but really, when got when Paul says to a woman that you're called to be a homemaker, um, he says you're you're being called to directly image and display God, right? God to display His kindness, His beauty, His hospitality, right? Um, and so, uh, it's not a denigration; um, it's an honor. Uh, to to the the task of homemaking is an should be an honored task, um, and so it's not a question of what you can and what you can't do. It's always a, a question of how do I put God's uh, image into the world uh, in the the most effective way. And Paul twice says that homemaking is one of the most effective ways. Right, um, that it that building a home is a, a is preaching the good news poetically with beauty, um, preaching the good news with kindness, with, uh, with, uh, by building a space for people to have fellowship in, to have life in. And so when we chafe under verses like this, we, we do that because we're not thinking in terms of the image of God. Uh, the, the, uh, the values of um, the scriptures uh, reject, when we when we reject the values of scriptures, we reject the restoration of the image of God um, in in our gender, in and through our gender, right? Because God isn't insulting women um, by telling pastors to encourage older women um, to uh, teach homemaking. Um, he's telling them how to be like Himself, right? He's telling women here is a way to put on display who I am and what I'm like. Now, we're going to see that this is actually something that Paul talks about in a number of different ways. And because of our uh, misunderstanding of the importance of the image of God, the restoration of the image of God as the primary role of the family, um, we miss a lot of these things and we end up turning things into lists of rules that are actually calls up to image God. Um, and so, uh, but homemaking is one of those, uh, is one of those things. And um, it, it's a, uh, it's something that I think is worth uh, meditating on and thinking on, but it's also a skill that you can develop and get better at, uh, as a way of saying, I'm, I can, uh, shut the mouth of blasphemers, uh, here in my calling as a homemaker.